get into the meat of the video, I did want to say I haven't even notified the winner yet, but the giveaway, the winner was a YouTube commenter, I-G-O-N. I have not yet replied to her YouTube comment to let her know that she's won yet, but that's who won. I haven't, I've been so busy this morning. I haven't been able to make the announcement on Instagram yet. I've been able to respond to the actual winner <laughs> because I've been so busy today. Today is not so. But then, of course, every Monday morning is not so. Am I right? Hey, everybody. I see you. Hey, hey. So, Gina, if you're watching this, last name, is it? I, I'm not even going to try. L-I-G-O-N. I will just like butcher it. There you are. You're here. You're in the chat. You won. <laughs> I see you. You won. I am going to, after the live stream is over, I'm going to reply to your comment on that video and let you know to uh, to reach out to me. You won. Yay. One year. Yay. Okay. So I wanted to have a discussion about this and I kind of wanted your advice. Uh, I need you guys because, okay. So I want to have a talk. And the reason why I wanted to have a talk about liquidation.com is because I have heard, I've heard people talk good things about them and I've heard people talk bad things about them. And so I wanted to have an open discussion about the platform and then I wanted to get y'all's advice because I'm trying really hard not to be super duper pissy. Um, fun products you sue them for real? For real, for real? Okay, so if, um, if you stayed through to like the last 10 minutes of my Thursday q and I kind of already talked a little bit about it. So if you actually lasted throughout that entire video, you're probably going to hear me talk about some of the same things, but just bear with me because I do want to get your advice. Um, so with liquidation.com and one reason why, I, I think I already said this, but another reason why I wanted to have an open discussion about it is because people are talking about how you should use them. <laughs> and so I wanted to like put this out there because, you know, with any liquidation company, there's going to be pros and cons. I think I've already said in a video before that I almost think that, and it was so great. You know, not only do people not do that just because they don't have the time to do that, but they don't do that because they don't want to give themselves more buy competition. You know what I mean? So, but when someone has a bad experience with a company, it's like, go to the internet, look to rev uh, reviews, let everybody know that they're scammers, never buy from them. But when something is every single liquidation company I've looked into, all you find is negative things about them. Uh, even, you know, companies that I've used that I've had zero problems with and I continue to buy from them, my connection is unstable. You've got to be kidding me. Is this breaking up again, you guys? I'm going to wait just a second because YouTube is telling me my connection is bad. So I'm going to wait just a minute. Okay, it says that I'm back. Hopefully, it didn't cut out too much. Very choppy. Which makes me very angry because I just had Cox Communications out here to run me a completely different line. So I'm very upset if it's still breaking up. Hopefully, it's back. Hopefully, it's back. I'm going to sit here just for another second to make sure that everybody in the, I'm not back. It's bad. Very choppy. Are you kidding me? Just breathe through it. Breathe through it. Because I don't want to get super duper angry. We might have to restart. I might have to reboot.
Okay, I'm looking still bad, frozen. Frozen. Wonder if it's the snow. Okay, they're saying I'm back. Working fine, back, getting better, freezing. <laughs> I am so sorry, you guys. It's good now, working fine, getting better. See, I just ran a speed test. I like, as we're sitting here, I just ran a speed test and my upload was like good. So that's weird. Okay, well, it's it's better. I'm going to have to like go back into YouTube and like cut all this crap out. <laughs> okay, I'm going to rely on you guys in the chat. As, as long as it's good now, as long as, oh, I see. Okay. All working. Okay. No, I have I have no other applications running at all. I'm going to start closing stuff down just to be sure. Yeah, I don't have hardly anything open at all. Much better. Okay. Ho I'm going to have to like go back in and like cut out all that 5 minutes. <laughs> okay. Okay, everybody's saying that it's much better now. Okay, so I'm going to continue on. I'm not going to reboot. I'm not going to reboot. Okay. Thank you guys so much for all of your patience. I know that whenever the internet gets really, really weird. Sorry, you guys. Okay. So where was I? I was talking about bad reviews. Um, okay. So anyways, um, yeah, so Nicole says I got my first lot from liquidation and it was great. Exact that was the same thing that happened to me. That was that's why I went back. I bought from liquidation.com three times now. The first one was great. The I actually bought uh I bought the first one and then I bought two in the same weekend from two different sellers. One was good, one was not. Uh one was horrid. So um so I wanted to have an open discussion and get your guys' opinion. Tell me what you think I should do. So this morning, I still have not heard anything back from liquidation.com. So just a quick, super quick sum up. I did a video of the unboxing. The manifest was totally inflated. Uh, they were saying that I was going to get these miscellaneous health and beauty items and every single one had an estimated retail value of $39.99. I got like a used tube of jock itch cream, a stick of men's deodorant. I got a set of Dollar Tree travel little baby hairbrushes. Um, all of those things were definitely, definitely not $39.99 new retail. So that is why I was disputing it. I was disputing it because the the manifest was grossly inflated. And that is actually a uh, uh, what, what's what's the word? A selection when you do a dispute. Uh, when you do a dispute, you have to select the reason why. And one of the options is manifest growth misrepresented. And so I was like, oh, it looks like this kind of thing happens all the time because it's a freaking selection on the on the the dispute on the dispute submission. It's an actual manifest grossly misrepresented. Select all of this evidence. I sent in photos. I sent in a copy of the manifest. I I submitted the video. I submitted all of this stuff. And so it takes up to 10 days for them to decide how to rule the, a dispute and filed the dispute on 
it was two weeks ago. It was on December 31st. It was on New Year's Eve. I filed the dispute and I submitted, I, I filed the dispute within the time frame they said I needed to. I submitted all of the documentation within the time that they said that I needed to. And it says up to 10 business days. And so I'm like, okay. So it had been last Friday. I still had not heard anything from them. I had called them three times in the last two weeks. And every time I get told, I'm sorry, there's nothing that we can do until the dispute department has made their decision. And they're still within their 10 days. So there was literally nothing that anybody in the customer service department would do. It was just kind of like, whoops, sorry, you know, they're still in their 10 days. They haven't made a decision. There's nothing we could do. And so I called this morning right before I came live just to see if I could get some sort of resolution. And know what they told me? They told me that today is day nine of the dispute because they said that the first day that I submitted it, that doesn't count as a day. And then the day after was New Year's Day and they were closed. So today is technically day nine which means that they have today and tomorrow to make their decision. And I flat out asked her, why is it taking so long? Like, why do you need up to 10 days? Like, either you're going to do something or you're not. Why are you stringing me along for 10 days? And that's the part that probably has me the most frustrated. Um is that they're just stringing me along. So I've had this stuff for two weeks. It's taking up room. It's three giant boxes. It's taking up room. I cannot touch it during the dispute. That's one of the big things. Once you file a dispute, you cannot alter the stuff. You cannot sell the stuff. It has to just sit and wait. Um, I paid, I'll, I'm going to be real with you guys. I paid $450, maybe a little bit more with the, the buyer's premium because you do have to pay a buyer's premium on liquidation.com. And that percentage is set by the seller. I had to pay crazy, crazy outrageous shipping uh, because it was three big boxes and it was going to be cheaper than a pallet. Um, so I'm all in like 450 something dollars with shipping and everything on this lot. And if I were to sell what I could actually sell, I would probably sell about a hundred dollars worth. And it's like, it's really bad. And again, I say before people start commenting, and I'm not talking about people in the chat right now, I'm talking about people commenting on this video later. Yes, I understand that there are risks to liquidation. I understand that. And had this happened, with an accurate manifest, I would have taken the loss. I probably would not have said anything to anybody and I would have moved on with my life. But the fact of the matter is the price was driven up because they inflated the manifest untruthfully. And anyone who tells me that, oh, this is a part of liquidation, you just have to take the loss. But yes, they grossly misrepresented the manifest to make it look like the boxes were over $3,000 when they were not. So if the manifest were accurate and all of the stuff was broken, then okay, that's the risk because I knew that there were going to be returns. So the manifest could have been 100% accurate. It could have been full of a bunch of, uh, like men's trimmers that were supposed to retail for $50, I could have gotten them all and they were all broken. That would have been the risk. I would have been like, man, I had 50 men's razors that were for $50, but every one of them is broken and now I can't sell them. That would have been the risk. But no, they claimed that there were things in those boxes that weren't in those boxes. That is grossly misrepresented to inflate the bidding. And that is why I am so pissed. It's not because, oh no, I lost money because the liquidation, everything was, and it's because they lied to drive up bidding. So that is the problem that I have. So this is the part where I need advice. So I was hoping to have a resolution before I asked what everybody thought that I should do, but they still have two days left according to the business day schedule and, uh, and they're dragging their freaking feet. <sighs> if 
they choose not to do anything or if they choose to give me less than half of my money back, I am considering filing a charge back dispute with my credit card. Now, if I do that, I can never buy from them again. And so this is going to be the part that's kind of a repeat of what you might have heard last time. So if I'm repeating this, I'm sorry. Um, why now? Why would I ever want to buy with them again? So if I file the chargeback. I can no longer shop with the site again. So why would I want to shop with them again? Because, like I stated, Liquidation.com is not just one company. It's not like bulk where you're buying from one liquidator. Liquidation.com is an amassment. Is that a word? <laughs> an amassment. I don't know. I'm just going to start making up words because I'm so frustrated. It's a whole bunch of sellers. So just because one seller is bad doesn't mean that others are. So I might want to continue to use the site in the future and just not shop with that seller again. But then there is the risk where you don't know which sellers are good and which ones are bad. And so if liquidation.com as a site doesn't protect me as a bidder, then who's to say this won't happen 10 times? If there's, let's say, 50 sellers on the site, who's to say that more than half of them aren't bad and they're just going to lie all the time and then take your money? I have like, I if I have zero protection... But then what if the seller that I'm dealing with is like one of the three bad sellers on the site and the chances of me having this happen again are low. We, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, Yeah, it's it's like how eBay is. It's a platform with many sellers. Yes, absolutely. And see, if if we wanted to compare it to eBay, that would be like that would imagine it's not liquidation.com. Imagine it's eBay and I'm a buyer. Like <laughs> that that is obscene for for me as a buyer to get ripped off by a seller and then file a dispute and eBay is dragging me along for 10 days saying, oh, we'll figure it out. Oh, we'll do, oh, oh, giving me zero protection. It's like that would, that is, eBay wouldn't do that. You know, with as many issues as a lot of us have as sellers on, on eBay's platform, eBay would never do that to a buyer. Never. And so I'm just like appalled at how liquidation.com is treating me as a buyer. I am appalled, especially because it's such a big chunk of money. I mean, I'm sure to a lot of people that um, a lot of people have liquidation, $450 is like a drop in the bucket compared to thousands of dollars spent on liquidation. Yes, but it's $450 is a lot of money to me. I want to know what you guys would do? Would you just deal with whatever they decide with the dispute? If they decide to give me money back, awesome. If they don't, just never buy from that seller again and continue on. Or would you say, if they don't give you what you want, sell a chargeback, never shop on site again, that's BS. I want to know what you guys would do. I want to know what you guys would do. But I do want to this whole situation with liquidation.com, it's not shaking me at all. It's really not. Like, I'm not like angry at the world. I'm not hating liquidation. I'm not, you know, I'm fine. If if they give me zero dollars back and I can't file a dispute or I can't do a chargeback, if I just lose the $450. I'm going to move on. I like, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'm not going to let it like ruin me, but I'm just curious to know what you guys would do. Bad connection again. Doesn't it figure? God dang it. It's got to be the snow. It's got to be the snow or something. Boycott if no resolve. How many good purchases? I've had two and one was from the same seller.
Okay, let's see here. Rainer says, I'd want an opportunity to shop with them again. I think it'll go in your favor. Your proof is very solid. Sean Pearson says, liquidation.com, never again, not worth it. I know Gypsy Thread. Uh, I, Destiny's already told me her story. We've had talks about it. So I already know her story. Shop on the side again, just use a different card. I don't think, I think that they boycott your IP address. Thrift Traders here, good morning. Uh, let's see. I would not buy from that seller only because you've bought good things in the past. Yeah, but one of the good things, one of the two good things was that exact same seller. So it's it's just, it's tough. New Spew says, I sound like Kanye West on auto-tune. Thanks. If they're dishonest now, what would they do in the future? How much money do you want to take your chance on? Very good point, Kimberly. That's a very good point. Anne says, I would wait. If they don't contact you, then file against with the card. Okay. I would not buy from that seller and count it as a lesson learned. Don't burn bridges because you never know what great seller is around the corner. You guys aren't helping me make a decision. <laughs> I keep going back and forth. I don't know what to do. 450 dollars is way too much money to lose. You have a platform that you had a voice in. Yeah. Have you made any profit? The so far, the one good lot. Now I have I've gotten a second lot that was good, but I haven't listed any of it yet. So I can't say that. Um, but the one good one, I doubled my money in two weeks. Ditch the seller. Just not buy from that seller again. Why don't you just reach out to the seller? Because you're supposed to file all disputes with the site. So I'm just following, I'm just following what I thought was protocol for liquidation.com. We're assuming that they won't make it right. Maybe they will and all is forgiven. Yeah, see, trash man flipper. See, that's my thing. I'm trying, I'm trying to preemptively know what I'm going to do. So in the next two days, today and tomorrow, I should find out what they're going to do. And so I'm basically thinking to myself, if they don't do anything, what is my next move going to be? Because if they don't do anything, I autom I like want to know how I'm going to handle it. Because if I am going to file a charge back with my credit card, I want to do it immediately because it's already, by that time, it's going to be two and a half weeks since I'm, or three weeks, so, no longer than that because I made the purchase around Christmas. So the longer, maybe that's the whole idea. Maybe that's why liquidation.com is dragging their feet because they know, well, they made the purchase at this time. And if we drag it out, then the less likely they are to do a chargeback with the credit card because the purchase was made so long ago. I don't know. Maybe that's their mindset. But by this point, it's like going to be, by the time they make the ruling, it's going to be almost a month since I actually made the purchase. That's why I'm so angry because they've had my money so long. Destiny says, give them 10 days, see what they say, then file a charge back. If you do a charge back, you'll have to ship all the stuff back. It's all sitting in the freaking boxes anyway. It's all sitting out there. I can't do anything with it. Yeah, you only have like 30 days to file a chargeback. Yeah. They're waiting for the seller to respond, perhaps. They're buying time. Yeah. Block the seller, but still buy from them if they rule in your favor. 
Like I said before, I'm not looking for them to like give me a total refund and let me keep all of the stuff. That's not what I want. I want them to act like the fact that I got screwed over matters to them. Like right now, it feels like everybody on that side got their money and I got screwed over and they're just kind of like, eh, well, eh, well. Like, <laughs> and now they're dragging their feet through this entire process. I just wanted them to do something like that. Like the first, the first interaction that I had with bulk was they packaged something really crappy and something broke. Actually, two things were broken. And I sent them an email and within two days, they gave me 15% back on what I paid for the entire lot. And then there was another instance you guys haven't seen the video yet, but it's, it's, I've done the video. I just need to edit it and upload it. Uh, they badly packaged glass inside of a box and three, I think it was three glass or it was, no, it was two glass and one plastic item completely busted. And there was broken glass inside the box. I actually cut myself. I cut myself on camera <laughs> and I messaged them. And within two hours, they gave me back a chunk of money and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like I have gotten two refunds from bulk for errors that they made in the time it has taken liquidation.com to drag their feet through this entire dispute process. Like just to put that into perspective, this a little bit of perspective. Bulk.com <laughs> has fixed two issues instantaneously in the 10 days that it has taken liquidation.com to figure this stuff out. So like, I just, I want them to just care a little bit, even say that they're sorry. Like every time I've talked to them, it's just kind of like, sorry, they have 10 days. They have 10 days. That, that's all they keep telling me. They have 10 days to figure out what they're going to do. There's no, there, never once have they said anything like, I'm so sorry that you're upset. Just please hold out. To make a decision. There's never been any sort of empathy in their voice or just like, eh. <laughs> like that's the way. And it's just, that's because bulk is their own seller. Yes. But again, I say, I would just like to hear some sort of, like, if it were my site that a seller screwed a buyer on, I would be appalled and so sorry. Like, I would, I would instruct my customer service reps to apologize and say, I'm so sorry that you're having to wait this long, but we're working on a resolution. Say something that leads me to believe that as a buyer, I matter. And the fact that I am upset or I had to file a dispute at all is just not right. And it's just, it's very bad customer service. Yes. It's just, it's the whole situation is frustrating. Yes. Via trading is also a very good place. Yeah. Anytime you have any issues with via trading, they're very good about it also. Nicola, I think you're right too. I think if you have, an I think you've answered your own question. They have no customer service. Don't use them. I think, yeah. Yep. And I forget who said it earlier. Um, yeah. How much money are you willing to lose trying out different sellers knowing that the site itself is probably not going to back you up. Yeah. Sounds like their customer service is crap. It is. It is. I kept calling customer service. <clears throat> Today I got someone different. I actually preferred her. Um, but the other times I called, I kept getting the same lady and she did nothing but make me even more angry. Like, I hung up the phone even angrier than I was before I called. She was just like so rude to me. Like she wasn't like 
to, I thought she was rude because of just the lack of care. And she was just like, well, they have 10 days. So there's nothing that I can do until then. And then just like cut off. And then I called back again and I got her again a few days later. And I was just like, I was just calling to find out if there's been any sort of progress with my dispute. Well, it's still within 10 days. So they haven't made their decision. I can't tell you anything. <laughs> it's just. Uh... <laughs> Flipping tables. Oh. Putting this in again. Okay. I just sent them a message on Facebook with a link to this video. I asked if they could assist you with this. I hope that you don't mind. I've sent them links to videos. I've sent like, I'm like, here's a link. Here's I, I've done personal videos and attached the, the personal video. Like I have unlisted videos on this channel and sent them links. And I'm like, look at all of this video evidence. Please do something. I would have thought with as much evidence as I gave them, they would have dis like figured it out by now. That's why I'm just like, Jeez. wonder how many calls they get a day. <sighs> Depends on how many people are screwing people over. I can tell that their customer service department is not very big because I've called four times and I talked to the same person the first three times. And then the fourth person today, I finally got somebody different. So I can assume that they don't have very many employees. <laughs> I thought that that good business was the customer's always right. That's what I thought too. That's what I thought too. Oh yes, and sorry you guys. Uh, this isn't exactly a Motivation Monday video, but I needed to talk to you because this is like the start of my week and I've been really busy. I've been super grumpy and now I just need to know how I'm gonna, like as soon as I figure out how they want to figure, like. As soon as they figure it out, I want to know what my next move is going to be. And so I'm really curious to see what you guys think. Have you asked for a supervisor? I have asked to talk to someone else, but they told me that it's not, the, the dispute has 10 business days before anything can happen. So it would do me no good. That if it hasn't been 10 days, like that's their company policy is 10 business days. So until 10 business days rolls around, I cannot do anything. Nobody can do anything. <laughs> so. I know this has nothing to do with Good Till canceled listings, but I'm frustrated. I've used my phone app to list on eBay for a long time and now automatically doing Good Till canceled. Yeah, eBay, when they did the um, the updates to their app, it messed with a whole bunch of stuff. It messed with a whole bunch of stuff. I can't tell you exactly what is wrong, how to fix it, and how it changed because I've never really listed on the app. The most that I do with the app is I create the listings on the desktop and then I will open the drafts on my phone and I'll attach pictures and then I'll list, um, I'll list it after I attach the pictures. So I will activate drafts through the, um, through the app, but I don't do like listings start to finish on my app. I never have. I never have. And for the longest time, I never even attached the pictures through my phone. Um, I would do everything on the desktop, but I do know that a lot of people have been dealing with a lot of issues just strictly listing through the app.
likely the best option is to just put it aside, try to keep it out of mind and mark your calendar for the next callback. That's, that's basically what I've done. The boxes are sitting aside. I don't look at them every day because <laughs> if I did, I'd probably get really, really angry. Um, and I just move on with everything else that I'm doing. Um, I should probably have a plan of action though for when that's, that's part of the reason why I'm asking you guys what you think I should do. Because once they do decide, like if they decide whatever's going to happen, if I'm stuck with the stuff, I guess I should have a plan of action of how I'm going to list it all. Or maybe it should be sorted already so that when I get the decision, if I need to start selling it off so that I can make some money off of it, which it's not going to be a lot, um, then I'm already ready to go. But I don't know. I don't know. But again, I say, and I'm going to repeat myself because I my connection was really crappy and I don't know if if while I was talking, it, it went through or not. But again, I don't want anyone to think that like this bad encounter with liquidation has like got me down. Like I like, it's like in the grand scheme of things, I don't care. They could refuse to give me any money back and none of it would sell. I would continue on with my life. Like not like if one thing doesn't even sell, they don't give me any money back. I, I can't do a charge back. Like if it's just gone, I would just continue to move on with my life. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Like genuinely, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I don't spend hours of my day stressing about it. I promise you. But it is frustrating every time I do think about how they're dragging their feet on this. And that's why I don't want to have to dwell on this after they make their decision. I want to already know what I'm going to do as soon as they figure it out. Pixie girl. Yeah. I think I'm kind of leaning towards, towards that way. I say charge back because you don't want to do a uh, deal with a company that supports shysty transactions. Yeah. But I did also want to put this entire situation out there because there are a lot of people that use liquidation.com and they do well. It's probably because they have the same seller and they just keep doing the same business like over and over and over and over again. But anybody who is just going to the platform that has zero to go off of, be warned that this could happen. And liquidation.com's customer service is not the best. I'm being polite. <laughs> Is anyone else having trouble getting promoted listings to work on the desktop? I keep getting a message not available. I have not been using really any promoted listings lately. So hopefully someone in the chat can help out with that. I haven't even tried to open it. Ooh, Roderick, I like that. Sometimes you have to go back and forth with a liquidation company. You have to evaluate their long-term value to your company's growth. And right now, I am not enjoying dealing with this company. I am not enjoying dealing with liquidation.com at all. They've done nothing but bring me stress. Like everything else has been peachy, like peachy keen. I've been processing lots of boxes. I have been sending a lot of stuff into Amazon. Today, I legitimately filled up my van. Like before I came live, I had to go to the postal annex to drop off all of the boxes because I have more stuff to send into Amazon, but I can't fit it into the van right now because it was full. So I am like getting shipments in. I'm processing things. I'm getting stuff ready for Amazon. I'm sending stuff out. I'm putting stuff on eBay. I'm selling the stuff. Like I've got all of this stuff going on. And the only thing that I have been stressed out about is liquidation.com. That's the only thing that has got me stressed out. So the idea of doing long, now that you say that, the idea of having to deal with this company over and over again, it's not something I want to do. It's not something I want to do. There's there's other good things happening. I don't I don't need them. It's always nice to have a lot of options, but it's I have to weigh if it's worth it or not. 
<sighs> but here in like realistically, I'm looking at the clock. Realistically, I should go like ASAP because I have a couple of things to do before Benjamin gets home and he's gonna be uh he's gonna be here very, very soon. What about bulk? I like bulk, but I think I'm going to let me know in the chat really quick if you guys would be interested in this. Um because I have some very strong opinions about bulk, bulk.com, B-U-L-Q. I am wondering if I should do just an entire video or we can have an open discussion about it in a live stream because there are a lot of things about bulk.com that I think people should know about um, because I don't want people to like see me buying on bulk and think, oh, I'm just going to go spend a whole bunch of money on bulk because the problem with bulk.com is that you have to be super careful about a lot of things. The company as a whole, I do really like. Like I said, their customer service is really good. I've been very satisfied with the with the uh, with the orders that I have received. But I don't want anyone to think that you just go to bulk, buy something, and you make money because that's that's not how it works. You have to be very careful with bulk. Um, you will see a lot of people that will do videos about bulk. Uh, you will see people bad mouth bulk. Um, and there are reasons for it. So I do feel like it's more than just, hi, look, I, I unboxed this thing from bulk and I'm going to go make a whole bunch of money because that's not, uh, that's not how it works. Jeanette. Yeah. You really have to go through the manifest. Yes. There's lots of crap on bulk. Yes. Yes. Live stream discussion, video. You have to really research lots on bulk. Yes. And that's the thing that I wanted to get into, like the do's and don'ts of bulk.com because they're, uh, I, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I go through phases where I buy a lot on bulk and then I don't buy any. Now I do have, I do have unboxings that are already filmed. I think I have like six. I think I have six that are all filmed, but they're not edited and on my YouTube channel yet. Um, because I'll buy a lot all at once or I don't buy any for a little while. Um, thank you, Going On Grumpy. So you drop a hammer. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Do your research. It's not easy. Yes. And so I, the reason why I wanted to have an open discussion about bulk.com is because I would... I would genuinely feel really bad if anybody watched me unbox a, a box from bulk and think, woo, I'm going to go buy a whole bunch on bulk. And someone ends up buying a pallet on bulk or a $500 box on bulk and they can't get their money back. You know what I mean? I would feel really bad if they only bought it because they saw me buy it, buy stuff from, from the site and they didn't pick wisely enough. And I would feel a little, a little bit responsible. So I kind of feel like I want to have a, an open discussion about that. So that way I kind of cover all of my bases a little bit and I don't feel responsible for people losing money. You know what I mean? So maybe, maybe we'll do a live stream um, sometime in the next week just about bulk and we can kind of discuss. And then we can also kind of see like your, you use guys, use guys's experience with bulk too. And know like if you've had good buys, bad buys, your experience dealing with the site. Brandy, is it true bulk sells on eBay and undercuts eBay resellers that they sell to uh, that's the rumor. That is a rumor. I don't know how true that is. I will say though, it is my opinion that if that's what they were really doing, 
that there wouldn't be some of the good things that I've gotten in boxes. Like I've gotten some things in boxes that they could have easily pulled out. Like they could have easily pulled out and sold it on eBay themselves, or they could have sold it on Amazon, or they could have sold it at a liquidation sale, who knows, uh, that they could have easily done that. And they didn't. So I don't know how true that is. It could be true. I don't know. You bought unexpected returns case today, kind of nervous. Yeah, uh, I had an uninspected returns lot from bulk.com and half of it was literal garbage. Like it was empty boxes or empty packaging and the item itself was gone. Um, but then, but then I bought an unexpected returns lot off of bulk.com and almost everything was in brand new condition. Almost everything. I was like, are they kidding? These are returns? Like they were brand new. And just for, you know, S and G's, I pulled it out and tested. Everything was fine. So I have found that bulk.com has made some mistakes in the buyer's favor. They make mistakes in their, in their favor and then they make mistakes in our favor. So you know, thrift trader. <laughs> uh, thrift trader just sent me a $50 super chat. Here's to the bet I lost. Oh my gosh. Well, now I'm going to have to explain that. Thrift trader said that he bet me $50 that I would never dumpster dive. He lost. <laughs> that was over on Wade's channel in case you guys, in case you missed it. The interview over on Wade's channel. He bet me $50 I would never dumpster dive. I stopped at a dumpster and pulled out some potatoes just for him. And now I didn't post it anywhere, but I did. I stopped at a dumpster. I pulled some potatoes out of a dumpster just for him. He saw the video and <laughs> he lost the bet. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are greatly appreciated. Oh, anybody who doesn't know who Thrift Trader is, go check out his YouTube channel. Go, go take a peek. Go take a peek over at Thrift Trader's YouTube channel. Wait, you dumpster dived? Yes, briefly I did. I'm probably, <laughs> I'm probably gonna try to do it some more on my channel. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I might. But yeah, I did. I was just driving around and he was like, I want to see you dumpster dive. I'll bet you $50 you won't dumpster dive. Well, those potatoes say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> Try it. You'll be surprised what you can find. I think I will. I have a few plans. I have a few plans for being a little, a little spunky. No shame in dumpster diving? Psh, heck no. The problem is I have to find dumpsters that are available to me um, because there are a lot of dumpsters around me that are like sealed, like crazy sealed. There's no way to get in them. They have like tunnels going from the buildings into the sealed trash cans. So there's no way... So I have to like, if I'm going to dumpster dive, I'm probably going to have to like go a ways away to, uh, to try to do that. <laughs> Down with future dumpster diving content. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. All right, you guys, but I do need to go, uh, cause Benjamin is about, Ooh, he might actually be here. Crap. Okay. I really do have to go. <laughs> I really do have to go, you guys. Okay, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you so much for your advice. I really genuinely appreciate it. Give the video a thumbs up before you leave, please. I would really appreciate that as well. Uh, I will be live on Thursday afternoon for the regularly scheduled live Q&A. And until then, I will see you guys later. I hope you all have many, many sales and a wonderful week. Thank you, guys. Bye.